Hey guys, in today's video for the series, How Does a House Work? I'm going to talk about how does electricity work? More specifically, how does electricity get into your home and what happens once it's inside the home? So for those of you out there who are interested in this stuff, maybe you've lived in a house your whole life, but you don't actually know how it works, this video is for you. First, let's talk about electricity. In my humble opinion, probably the single greatest invention ever made by humans. If you think about it, we've done all these other things. We've gone to the moon. Now we've got AI that's thinking and doing things for us, but none of it would be possible without electricity. Everything we use uses electricity. So when electricity was invented, eventually they figured out how to get it to our houses and now none of us have houses that don't have electricity. It's an incredibly important utility for us to have. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how electricity is initially made and how it gets to our house. To start off with, electricity is made by us out of thin air, basically. Unlike water that we have to get from a source like a lake or underground, with electricity, we have plants that just simply have what we call electric generators. It's just a magnetic stator, they call it, wrapped by coil. And as that magnet spins, it throws out electrons, creates electricity, and then is sent onward to its destination. So we see these big, huge power lines. They're carrying huge amounts of voltage. Those go into, you know, we'll call it our neighborhoods where we have things like uh, substations, which are the little electric stations you see that have a lot of little boxes and things. That's taking the power and distributing it to our neighborhoods. And then the power simply comes down our street with lines that are either overhead lines on poles or underground that are carrying a large amount of electricity. And from there, I'll show you what sends the electricity to your house. So I'm in front of one of the houses we're finishing up right now. And out at the front of their lot, Unfortunately for them, they have a lot of pedestals, utility pedestals, we call them. But the electricity in this neighborhood is underground. So when the developer developed the subdivision, they had the utility company in, come in and put all the electric lines underground. So they run down the streets and those have very high voltage because they have to feed all of these houses. What happens then, if you have power poles, you'll see the little round gray uh, kind of like cylinders up on top of those. Those are what we call transformers. Or if you are in an underground power subdivision, you have these green boxes, also transformers. They're the exact same thing. What they do is they take the high voltage of these lines running down the street, they step it down to the point that's usable for a house, and they send it to the house. So we've got the transformer right there. This right here is what we call a temporary pole. It's basically a temporary meter and breaker box to use during construction. We can't put the meter on the house because, hey, we don't have all the fixtures and everything on it yet. So we use these temporary poles for basically all the subcontractors to plug into. But recently we did have the power company come in and run our underground line. So coming off of the transformer is an underground line that is running all the way down here and up to the house. So I'm up by the house now, and what happened is the power company ran the line through here, and they run it all the way up to the house. And it's funny, I thought coming here, the electricians were gonna have built what we call our, our service or our meter base. They haven't done it yet. But this is where the power company, the line for the house, is coming up out of the ground. And here's the big wires that are sending all the power to the house. Now what will go here will be what we call a meter base. You know, that gray box that you see that comes into the house that has the meter setting in it. So the power comes from the street, from the power company, into that box that has the meter in it. It spins the meter and then goes into the house. The meter, of course, is how they know how much power we're using. Uh, these days, they don't even come read them. You know, they don't have a human come read them. They're just all electronic that they do from, you know, home base of wherever, wherever the power company is. So basically the power comes into the house here and goes through either in some houses, there will be a breaker panel right on the other side, especially when they're on garages and things like that. This house is a little bit unique. We had the power coming in 
on the primary bedroom side of the house and we have the breaker panels in a different section of the house. Behind me are the two breaker panels or load centers they're often called. Most of us know it as breaker panel or breaker box. Uh, this has not been made up yet, but it's easy enough to talk you through what the purpose of the breaker panel is. So I just talked about outside where the power is coming in, going through the meter, and then it gets run to these breaker panels. In the case of this house, we have two of them. What a breaker panel does, it actually has a few functions. It serves as the method of distribution. It sends the powers to all the various, sends the power to all the various areas of the house that we need it to. And it also serves safety functions. We know circuit breakers will trip if something bad is happening with them. That stops the power. Also, it's just flat out an on-off switch. If you need to work on something and you need to turn the power off to it, you can come in here and flip a circuit breaker. So, the best analogy I can think of with these is imagine you need to water four areas of the back of your house. It's 100 degrees outside. You need to put a lot of water on maybe these new trees, but you have one hose spigot on the back of the house. What do you do? Well, you run down to Home Depot. You buy one of those four-way hose splitters. You screw it onto the hose spigot, and now you run four hoses off of that. That's in effect a simple way to think about what a breaker panel is doing. It's taking all of that power and then it's sending it with smaller wires to other areas of the house we call circuits. What is a circuit? Well, I don't actually know the exact definition, but it's the end point of the power. So we've got a 15 amp breaker. There will be a wire that runs to a section of the house and a circuit can have multiple you know, uh, electrical outlets on it and even switches. So you may have a wire that runs to a bedroom that handles all, or powers, sorry, <laughs> powers all of the outlets in that bedroom and maybe the lights in the bedroom. You can also have a circuit just be one outlet. And there are a lot of cases where you have those, we call them dedicated circuits. That would be sometimes the big outlets for things like an oven or a dryer, as well as a refrigerator. You don't want a refrigerator on a circuit that has a lot of other outlets on it because if something caused that circuit to trip and the breaker turns it off, everything in your fridge goes bad. Um, freezers out in the garage are great places to do dedicated circuits. The amount of people that have plugged a freezer into just one of the regular old outlets in the garage and then that circuit tripped because those are infamous for doing that because they have these their own circuit plugs on them called ground fault interrupters. Uh, people don't know that the freezer has been off for three days and all the food goes bad. So that would be why you would have a dedicated circuit, just one wire running to one outlet. That is how the breaker panel distributes the power throughout the house. You have all these wires running to all these circuits. Some wires are bigger, bigger gauge wire to handle more power. You know, in the United States houses, we have 120 volt outlets, which would be your normal outlet you're used to in your bedrooms and kitchen backsplash and all these places that you plug all the stuff into. And then you've got 240 volt outlets, which are the higher voltage um, that run certain things. You know, you're going to have a 240 outlet probably on your electric oven, on your electric dryer, you know, places like that. So that's what a breaker panel does for distribution of power. Now, what about the safety features of a breaker panel? Well, the one thing about electricity is that unlike water, let's say we had a plumbing leak in a house. Not ideal, but it's also probably not going to kill you, right? Electricity, we all know, can shock you, can electrocute you. It can also catch things on fire. So when it comes to electricity, it's quite a bit more dangerous and something that we need to have the ability to shut it off if there's a problem. So at its simplest function, a breaker panel can be used just for that, for you to manually shut off circuits. Hey, I want to replace the plugs. You know, they put these ugly old style, you know, beige plugs in this bedroom. I've repainted everything white. I want to change that to white outlets. Well, you've got to cut the power to that circuit to change out those outlets. You go find the breaker switch for that or the circuit breaker for that, turn it off. Now you can change those outlets out. That's kind of the simplest form of a breaker panel. 
But most of us know those uh, circuit breakers are also designed to kick off automatically if there's some kind of issue with that circuit. That can be a situation where we've got a bad outlet, maybe the wire's cut and it's arcing, uh, things that are dangerous, things that can cause you know, fires. And so that circuit breaker, breaker automatically kicks off, right? Because it want, it's a safety feature and we don't wanna have that kind of situation happening. Usually when you have a serious problem like that, where you've got a cut wire or something that's causing arcs and you know, basically short circuiting the circuit, um, you can't get that to stay on. You can keep clicking it over and it'll keep clicking back because it is sensing there's that problem. However, there's another thing that they do too, which is overload protection. So we have probably all been in a situation where you have plugged in a vacuum um, on a bedroom circuit and then somebody plugged in a hairdryer that happens to be on that same circuit. And keep in mind, outlets on a circuit aren't always in the same room. You may have an outlet in the bedroom circuit here, but it's also connected to the same outlets in the next door bathroom. So somebody has plugged in a hairdryer, turned the heat on high, you're running the vacuum. Those are two appliances that actually use a lot of power. The heating strips and hair dryers take a lot of energy to get hot and vacuums use a lot of energy. So what happens? Circuit breaker kicks off right? <laughs> You're in the middle of vacuuming, somebody else is in the middle of hair drying, click, power goes off. It hasn't shut off power in the whole house, it has just shut it, shut it off to that circuit. That is because that circuit was drawing more than the wire can handle. So there's a 15 amp circuit breaker on that wire, a wire has been used that can run maximize, maximize 15 amps of power, and we are drawing more than that. That can cause the wire to heat up. Again, that could be a, a fire hazard. So the circuit breaker kicks off. So basically we have limiters on how much power we can use through certain circuits. So that is really the purpose of a breaker panel. The electric comes in, gets distributed. It's also a safety feature. There are other safety features at the endpoints. These, these plugs themselves we've seen that have little circuit breakers in those, those are meant for water and you know to keep people from getting electrocuted. I'm not gonna dive into all the various things because the point of this video is really to help explain how power comes into the house and how it gets distributed to the house. Interestingly, again, using plumbing as a, an example, plumbing uses water. Water is a thing, as I mentioned, that comes from somewhere. Also, it doesn't just disappear when we use it. We understand we open a faucet it comes out of the faucet, it has to go down the drain and now leave the house, right? It goes out the sewer line and to wherever it's going, either a septic system or the city water treatment plant. We don't have to do that with electricity. We don't have to have a way for the electricity to leave the house. So from the standpoint of comparing something like a plumbing system versus an electrical system, with electrical, we're just worried about the electricity getting into the house, being distributed through the house, and having protection in place if something bad were to happen with it, but we don't have to worry about it leaving the house. So again, electricity is an amazing feature and a utility we all use and need daily. So I hope this video helps those of you who haven't really understood how electricity gets to our home, gets inside of our home, and how it gets distributed throughout the house at all these various plugs and switches that we have. So appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next one.